Hello, I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril. You know, today we're going to talk about beef. Like, where's the beef? Well, in the past five years, you know, beef has been making a comeback. And steakhouses are booming all over the country in American cuisine. Personally, I love beef. And I want to show you the best way to cook it. Some different cuts, maybe how to buy it, how to cook it, and uh, certainly how to marinate it. Probably one of the crazes right now in American cuisine, or is it really American cuisine, is uh, a lot of the Tex-Mex places that have opened up. Uh, dishes like fajitas and skirt steak and, well, I grew up on fajitas, but they weren't really called fajitas back then. At least Hilda didn't call them. She just called it London broil. London broil actually is this cut, or I should say this cut, which is the flank steak. It's usually marinated, which uh, I love to marinate flank steak. You see how the grains of the flank steak, they sort of run lengthways. And uh, you want to keep in mind when you're doing flank steak or London broil, I'm going to show you a quick little marinade in a little bit. But when you do marinate this, you want to make sure after you grill it, or sear it in the pan, or roast it, I personally like it marinated and grilled, you want to slice it against the grain. And that is the classic London broil, which has been, was very popular years ago in American dining, and uh, popular still today in a lot of restaurants. But uh, before the fajita craze, or Tex-Mex craze, now they sell skirt steak. And uh, this is what is classified as a skirt steak, which is used uh, in a lot of uh, southwestern cuisine. But you can see, basically, it's the same real cut, a little longer uh, than flank steak. And it's just from the skirt. And they call it a skirt because they use the length of the flank. And uh, it sort of looks like a little skirt. Well, I'll show you one. See how long? And uh, that's what's considered to be skirt steak. Same grain, needs to be marinated. And uh, one of my favorite steaks, and probably yours too, from the tenderloin, is the filet mignon. And you want to look for marbling of the filet, trimmed, uh, the most expensive cut of beef, but certainly absolutely delicious. Speaking about delicious, one of the least inexpensive cuts, this guy right here, is the brisket. Just the simple brisket. This is just raw beef brisket right here. Nice uh, marbling, as you can see. And what I like to do with brisket, I like to marinate brisket like I'm going to uh, show you in a second. And uh, I like to even boil brisket uh, in a little bit of Creole spices, perhaps a little crab boil and some stock, get it good and spicy. Barbecue it, barbecued brisket, whew, delicious. I'm going to make a very simple little marinade so that we can marinate our flank steak. Uh, just in a blender, I've, uh, I've taken some, I'm going to take some, a couple of tomatoes that I just chopped up. Very simple, seeds, juice, the whole bit. I've got a large onion that I just diced and I'm going to put the large onion in there. And uh, you got to have some spice. So I've got a couple of jalapeno peppers uh, chopped up and I'm um, going to put those in as well. Uh, garlic, because, well, a clove a day keeps a doctor away at least. And uh, I'm going to add some cilantro and just sort of twist it up a little bit. Um, I love cilantro. Coriander is another name. And then what I did is I took the juice of, uh, I'm going to take the juice of two uh, that I peeled lemons as well as two limes. The acid in these guys right here are going to really um, penetrate and help marinate and uh, cure at the same time a little bit uh, our flank steak. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and uh, some pepper, even though that I have jalapeno pepper. And uh, what I like to do is I like to just take a little bit of just a little water and add a little water in that. And then we're going to blend this, blend this baby up right here. Now, the water from the tomatoes also.
Look at that. Woo-hoo! A party of flavors happening right here on the Essence. Now, once you get it good and pureed like that, the last bit that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of good olive oil, just a little bit. I'm going to add a little olive oil in there, sort of like making a little dressing at the same time. I'm going to add some good olive oil, maybe about uh, not even a quarter of a cup I added in there. I'm just going to emulsify and electrify all at the same time right here. Now, watch how simple this is. Get it good and blended. It's got a good consistency. Let's see. Woo! Mmm! Delicious. A lot of cracked pepper on that flank steak. I'm going to add that cracked, cracked pepper, a little essence, and uh, a little salt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our incredible marinade. And uh, this is a non-reactive pan. And what we're going to do is pour that right on our flank steak. Now, let me, let me tell you another thing. What you want to do is, after you do that, you want to turn it over and uh, just sort of baste it with your spoon and uh, cover it, put it in the refrigerator, let it, uh, let it sit overnight, let it sit for two days, really get some incredible flavor. After the break, we're going to grill it up and I'm going to cook it up and, hey, stay with me. We'll be right back on The Essence of Ember. Hey, welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, now that we've got our grill fired up and our flank steak just marinating, I thought I would show you one of my favorite all-time dishes. We're going to just uh, make sure that our grill is ready to go and uh, take out our marinating uh, steak. Boy, it smells incredible. But what I like to do now is, when you're ready to get ready for dinner here, we'll just take our flank steak and uh, put it right on side of the grill. We're going to reserve that because uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there, and uh, we can use this to baste and also use this for almost looks like a salsa almost, and a just incredible flavor. Now, even though that we've got lots of good spices, and I'm going to add a little bit of essence on there so that we're totally sure, and then a couple of other of my favorite ingredients that we're going to add. I got a little bit of pepper. And uh, we'll save that. And uh, just brush this with a little bit of oil. A little spice. Then I have a little bit of red onion. I love grilled onions. You know, what we're going to do is get a little olive oil on our grilled onions, a little flavor on that. We'll give that a little spice as well. And we'll get those onions on the grill. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check and see how our flank steak's doing. What we're going to do is we've got to turn that around and see how the grain is cooking. It doesn't take a long time to cook. This is pretty rare right now, but really doesn't take a, a long time to cook. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to even come back, and take a little bit of our marinade once we flip it, and uh, just sort of baste, almost like you got a barbecue sauce. 
right on our flank steak. And then we're going to just season and oil and season. All right, now, another one of my favorite ingredients coming up is just good crusty Portuguese bread, and French bread, and uh, got some wonderful memories, particularly growing up with the, uh, in Fall River and working in Portuguese bakeries. I just have so many memories. And uh, what we're gonna do is, Kind of almost like we're going to make a poor boy sandwich in Louisiana. I'm going to take our crusty bread. I've got a serrated knife, which I find is really the best knife to use when you're cutting crusty bread. And I uh, want to take, take our crusty bread. And uh, I've got some good old butter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to butter our crusty bread here. Well, you could just give me this, and that will be fine. I don't even need the flank steak. But I have all my favorite ingredients right now for one of my favorite sandwiches. We're going to butter that up real good. And then what I like to do is we'll turn this flank steak over one more time. Turn our onions around. I love grilled onions. Woo! Little peppers. Mmm. Mmm. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna baste one more time our little flank steak. Get all those flavors in there. Good marinade, inexpensive cut. And we'll just sort of heat up our bread. Oh, you gotta have it a little warm. Can't have just cold bread so we'll just put it right on there until we're just about ready and uh, we've got all my favorite ingredients working right now we've got our flank steak and crusty bread just getting good and warm and some onions how could you possibly go wrong with something like this there's no way well when you're ready we'll take our bread like that and what we're going to do is Take our wonderful grilled onions, just put those around. Mm, 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 mm. Take our other little piece. And we'll take our little peppers. The thing I like to do with them, and we'll just cut those down a little bit. And uh, then what we do is put a little peppers just like that. Woo! How's that? Looking good already, eh? All right. We'll take our flank steak off the board. Remember what I was telling you earlier is that when you got that flank steak, you want to cut it against the grain. So here it is, we cut it just like that against the grain. We got this perfect, perfect medium rare. And uh, what we'll do is we'll layer that flank steak that's been marinated and basting right on our, on our onions and peppers. And, whoo! Tell you what, folks, you want to talk about the old time sandwich or poor boy. We got it right there. And let me tell you something, when we come back, you're not gonna believe the next dish I got. Don't go away, we'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Stay with me. Gossi and uh, let's get stuffing as we say one of my favorite filet of beef 
is stuffed with crawfish. Not crayfish, but crawfish. So what I want to do is I want to make a little crawfish stuffing and show you this great dish. I'm going to put some oil in the pan first of all. And uh, that's going to be for when we sear the steak. Crawfish, you know those guys right there. Tons and tons of crawfish in Louisiana. And this is what they look like when they're peeled. Just the crawfish tail meat. I'm going to add a little bit of onion and some bell pepper, both kinds. We're going to cook this up with a little bit of nice Creole spice, a little essence right in there. I want to do that just for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to add a little bit of green onion to that. Once we add the green onion, we're going to add some fresh garlic. And this is a dish I serve a lot when it's in when crawfish are in season, which is about Christmas time till uh, just before summer. We add those crawfish tails in there, and uh, crawfish tails big business in Louisiana when they're peeled. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add just a little bit of uh, beef stock. Let that cook out a little bit. Mmm. Needs a little bit more of that essence. And then what I like to do is I like to just take a little bit of breadcrumb. A little breadcrumb. I'm going to turn, our, uh, turn this heat off. I'm going to move this pan over. Take a little bit of that breadcrumb. Just sort of make a little delicious little stuffing as you can see that's simmering around and we're going to take that little stuffing see that we'll let it just finish cooking and then what I like to do is then I like to take my filet and uh, I tell you about this filet mignon you see that and what we do is we make a little pocket we make a little pocket little pocket just like that and uh, I then like to sear it but before I sear it we're gonna stuff it with a little bit of that delicious crawfish stuffing pack it in there mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. then once we got it packed in there we just sear our filet mm. a little spice we're just gonna sear this for a little bit on each side it's amazing that the way that um, some of it falls out that's quite alright because I'm gonna show you we're gonna make a little sauce it's amazing how quickly it will cook and the reason why it'll cook quickly is because um, we made that little pocket so it's actually like two little petite steaks they cook really uh, really well if you can't get crawfish tail meat as I had here mm, for that and you get the little crawfish we have a little saying in Louisiana how you just sort of uh, suck the head and pinch the tail what you do is you just peel them quite simply just like that one shell and you can just sort of pinch the tail and then the tail meat will just come available just like that. Now, to finish up my favorite filet dish, good and uh, medium rare, it's quite simple. Once I get it cooked medium rare, I add a little bit more stock and let that just sort of reduce a little bit. And the vapor of that, just really wonderful. You can actually take a little bit of that stuffing and put it back right inside there, as I am. You see that? So you sort of get a little surf and turf all at once. These wonderful sweet potato gaufrettes make a great accoutrement. And you just kind of do them on the mandolin, and they make a wonderful little accoutrement to that steak. And uh, it's just really amazing. Look at that, sweet potato gaufrettes. I'll tell you what, folks. It's been an unbelievable experience today. 
doing some of my favorite filet and beef dishes. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and I'll see you the next time on The Essence of Emeril. Bye now.